بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم آئی ایم ڈاکٹر محمد عدنان ورکنگ ایز اسسٹم پروفیسر ان دا ڈپارٹمنٹ آف فزکس کوہارٹ یونیورسٹی آف سائنس اینڈ ٹیکنالوجی آئی ویلکم یو ٹو دی کورس پی ایچ وائی ون زیرو تھری ویوز اینڈ آسیلیشنز ٹوڈے اٹ از دی ففٹین لیکچر آف دس کورس اینڈ دی ٹاپک از فیزرس First, I will give the learning objectives. At the end of this lecture, the student will be able to explain how a phaser can represent the oscillation of a string element as a wave mo- travels through its location. So basically, these are the sketches. Also, they will be able to explain how phaser diagram for two overlapping waves travel traveling together on a string indicating their amplitude and phase difference on this sketch also using the phaser they will be able to find out the resultant waves of two transfers uh, waves traveling together along the string they will be able to calculate the amplitude and phase and uh, they will be able to uh, write the displacement equations and then displaying all three phasers in a phaser diagram that will show the amplitude uh, the leading or lagging uh, and also the relative phases that is uh, whatever we have done in the previous lecture uh, interference of waves so this will be more of a general descriptions In this uh, course, we are following the book Fundamentals of Physics by Holliday, Resnick and Walker, 10th edition. Some of the illustrations are taken from this book. Okay. Uh, in our previous lecture, that is the lecture number 14, we have discussed the addition of a uh, Uh, two waves uh, using the superposition principle but that is limited to identical amplitudes and lambdas if we have such situation that is having uh, identical uh, parameters of the wave that is lambdas lambda means the wavelength or uh, the frequencies so that is a handy way to uh, discuss the resultant waves But in this lecture, we'll be discussing a more general technique that can be applied to any waves uh, and one can find out the resultant uh, of the wave. So with the help of the phaser, uh, which is a vector that rotates around uh, its tail, which is pivoted at the origin of a coordinate system. So, Uh, we can add basically phase phasers uh, to get the resultant waves so those vectors uh, do not require to have the same uh, uh, length by length i mean the same displacements now the magnitude of the vector which is that phaser is equal to the amplitude y m as i told you in this situation it is not required that the two Oh, amplitude let's say we have two waves y1 m is the amplitude of first wave and y2 m is the amplitude of the second waves so in this situation uh, it is not necessary that the two will be equal now the angular speed of the rotation uh, with which the phaser rotates is equal to the angular frequency of the wave so with these similarities uh, we can uh, discuss the the different properties of the phasers so for example this is a a wave uh, uh, which is represented by y1 having amplitude y1 uh, ym1 this one represent that it is the first wave and this is a sinusoidal wave having uh, wave number k and the angular frequency omega so how one can describe uh, through phaser 
so if we remember that when a wave uh, passes through a string each element just oscillates up and down as we have discussed in our previous few lectures that is they are just performing uh, uh, oscillatory motion the elements of the string uh, performing oscillatory motion when the wave travel let's say in this figure towards the positive x direction so when the wave traveling this portion for example this black dot uh, uh, the representation can be done with the help of these phasers so let's say this is the phaser y1m and the projection along the vertical axis is basically the displacement uh, uh, of the of that wave so basically it is the projection of the phaser uh, along the vertical axis is y1 so this is the first snapshot when a wave uh, passes through that string now we will concentrate on this part or this element as we have done in our previous lecture this will move up and down so for example this is moving with the uh, rotational frequency rotational speed uh, which is equal to the angular frequency as well uh, omega so with this rotation this uh, point uh, let's say after some time this will move down to this point so that uh, the the there will be zero projection uh, on this line so that y1 will be equal to zero now now during that uh, wave motion the object or this element will move here so let's say it starts from here it comes here and it will go down so at that point this is a third snapshot so at this position uh, uh, the projection is maximum so that y 1 m is equal to y and again it will go up as we have started from here and it will go up so at this position again the projection is y uh, and again this will just complete one one rotation so that y1 is now a projection equal to y and that is again maximum in this state of motion so this is just a, a way to describe uh, the wave through phasers so a different uh, position or we can say different snapshots are taken at different time so that we have different uh, magnitude of the phasers so with this concept uh, next we will see how we can add two waves or two phasers uh, uh, based on this phaser, phaser diagram now this is taken from uh, your course book so now when two waves travel along the same string in in the same direction we can represent them and their resultant wave uh, in a phasor diagram so we have a first wave that is represented by y1 m in into sine of kx minus omega t and let's say the second wave uh, uh, if you see the, in the last lecture y y m y1 m and the y2 m are equal but now they are different and also there is a phase difference of phi between the two so now uh, <clears throat> in such situation when the wave is having different uh, amplitude so then the phasor diagram is a handy way to describe the resultant waves so now we will add these two phasors so as we have discussed on the previous slide that is this is the representation of that phasor having uh, uh, this is the first wave uh, let's say y1 m and having a projection y1 on the vertical axis and the second phaser is uh, is is having uh, a phase difference of phi from the first that is the the wave 2 delayed by phi radian uh, uh, relative to the first one 
so that this is the second phase again the the length of or the magnitude of this vector cy1m is different than the y2 and hence the projections are having uh, different in length so that uh, the resultant will be the y1 and y2 so we have these two phasers uh, uh, how one can add these two that can be done with the help of the head and uh, tail rule that is that is the, the first phaser and the second phaser is having a phase difference of phi so that is the second the resultant will be y prime and that will be having a projection uh, y prime so that that y prime is now equal to y1 which is the projection of y1m and also y2 which is the projection of this y2m so that this is the resultant wave now the resultant wave is having a different uh, state of motion that is having this <coughs> angle phi so these two waves can uh, be added in the same way as we have discussed in the last lecture that is using the sine alpha plus beta formula that can be done here and also it can be done with this uh, head to tail rule. Now with this phasor diagram, uh, uh, to do this on a phasor diagram that is uh, the resultant wave we vectorally add the two phasor at any instant uh, during their rotation that is at this particular point that is this is a snapshot uh, the phasor rotates with the angular uh, speed omega so at that particular time we add the two and that is the resultant so at different time the length uh, will be different that is the magnitude of the resultant uh, wave will be different as we have discussed that at different uh, state of motion uh, you see the resultant uh, projection can be zero or it can be having a maximum value so accordingly uh, one can have uh, a maximum result or a minimum result so at this particular point one can add and having uh, this kind of situation where the phasor y2m has a has been shifted to the head bar of the phasor y1 as we have discussed through the phase diagram uh, now the the resultant uh, parameter that is the the y1 uh, sorry this amplitude of the resultant wave which is y uh, prime of m and also with this uh, new angle beta uh, that can be find uh, with the help of the phasor diagram uh, and also uh, in the same way as we have discussed previously uh, with the interference of wave. Now we can use phasors to combine waves even if their amplitudes are different so as uh, I have told you that uh, in this situation we have different amplitudes so this is the advantage of the phasors compared to the superposition of waves as we have discussed uh, in the previous lecture now in you in your code this is just introduced this topic is just introduced uh, in your later courses you will be uh, you will discuss more about these phases again you need to follow the following uh, five question which is uh, the, the, the this portion is based on the phasors and you need to find out the, the various aspects of the resultant wave uh, based on the phasor and phasor diagram with this uh, i need to thank you for your time